Thank you so much to all of the Nerdy Narrative patrons. Join now to help support the channel and help pick books that I read and review. Link in the description below. What up nerds? Welcome back. My name is Leslie. Today is Saturday and that means it's time to recap the week. Just talk about all of the things that I've been reading over the past week and who knows maybe something I picked up, something I might have to say about it will inspire you to add that book to your TBR or in the worst cases, make you take a book off your TBR. Before we jump into the books, don't forget the giveaway for the Ark of Marshall Carp's upcoming release, Don't Tell Me How to Die, that is still ongoing. I'm going to let that run through September 14th. I'll use a random YouTube comment generator to pick a winner. I will reply to your comment, so be sure that you are keeping an eye on your notifications just in case you are the lucky winner of the giveaway so that I can get in touch with you, get your details to get this book shipped out to you. For those of you who missed last week's video, you want to get more information, I will have that linked in the description below. That is the video you need to comment on to be entered into the giveaway. I don't know, I would have to check, which I haven't done, if you can put in multiple links of videos to select a comment. So we'll just keep it easy for my old ass sake and just comment on the one video. So that's that. Let's jump into what I read this week, beginning with what I finished. Now, I only finished one thing this week. That's probably because it was a novella. It's the first of three novellas by Stephen Aryan that is set in an alternate New York City. It's a fast-paced, noir crime thriller. I loved it. Even though this was a new adventure blending different genres that did not have magic or dragons, I knew he was going to do a great job. I just didn't expect on page one to immediately be in that narrative voice for that classic detective style with the descriptions, just the way that they were talking to one another. It's fantastic. I'm getting all of my notes together to film my non-spoiler review, which will be coming out, I believe, on October 3rd. So now's a great time to hit subscribe on the channel if you're not already, and those are the kinds of books that you like to read. Now let's talk about the fate of The Exorcist House Genesis by Nick Roberts. This is the sequel to The Exorcist House, which was the perfect blend of haunted house and possession horror. I had high expectations going into this sequel, which comes out September 13th, Friday the 13th, for those of you who might be interested in reading this one. Even though it didn't work for me, I did officially DNF this book. I loved getting the information, the story from the timeline of Merle Blatty, getting the opportunity to fill in the gaps with what he did with his life after he was exposed to this I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil the first book if you haven't read it. I absolutely recommend The Exorcist House. What it was for The Exorcist House Genesis that did not work for me is what came after the events of the first book. So there's the past timeline that starts in 1967 and then we have a current timeline in 1997 three years after the events of the last book and I just thought it was too campy. I did not like a lot of the descriptions that were being used. There is nothing that will ruin a good horror vibe for me faster than a really terrible, in my opinion, immature description. There's a scene in this book where there's something scary happening. I was all in, but what lost it for me is the character is observing something happening with an entity. And Nick Roberts described what was happening to a dick going limp. And I'm going, I just, that ruined it. Because I picture stuff that I read in my mind. And I was just going, that just ruined the horror vibe and immediately made me go, okay, this is stupid. This isn't scary anymore. Now it's just gross. And I'm just like, I'm not into that. And it just didn't get any better. But it was only in that storyline. I love the past, but the present was just completely unenjoyable to me. I just didn't like it. I didn't like who these characters became after the events of the last book. I loved this family in The Exorcist House. I could not stand any of them in Genesis. And it just got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm just done with it. Let's move on to something else 
And that's what I did. One of the books that I moved on to is book four in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series by Matt Denneman. The Gate of the Feral Gods is book number four and there is a lot of depth and intrigue in this book. The first book was insane. It was crazy. It was just over the top. It was hilarious. And I thought, okay, this is what this series is gonna be. The second book started throwing out hints to me that there was gonna be a much deeper story that I was going to get into. The third book made it impossible to ignore. And the fourth book, we start to get really in depth, but there is something serious, much, bigger that Carl and Donut are in the middle of rather than just participating in this reality dungeon crawler world. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of really great humor in this one. I am enjoying myself immensely, but I haven't been rewinding as much because of really funny parts. Instead, I'm rewinding because I wanna make sure I'm understanding a situation a little bit better. I'm looking for clues because I'm trying to figure out what this bigger picture might be that we're gonna uncover. For those of you who've been watching this channel for a while, you know, I'm the worst Nancy Drew in the world. I have not been able to figure it out. No conspiracy theories here, but I'm trying. I also have started 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. That's my patron pick of the month. Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads picked that one for me. He says this is one of the best collections he's read in a while. I mistakenly thought that this was the first thing I'd ever read by Joe Hill. I totally forgot he wrote the Lock and Key graphic novels, which I've read some of, and I watched the show on Netflix. The first story in the collection, I do not remember the title. It was okay. I had about the same reaction to the short story as a lot of the people in the short story did. It features the editor of a literary magazine that publishes the best of horror stories every year and he's going in search of this one particular author to see about getting a story included. I did not like that one so much, but the second one was a banger. This one features a haunted theater and it's such a beautiful story. It is a horror story, but it's so beautiful. Looking forward into continuing through that collection. That one, I checked out the audiobook from my library. I do not remember the name of the narrator. I do not like the narrator. He sounds like he has a cold and it's just distracting to me because I want to say, bro, go blow your nose and then come back and tell me the rest of the story. And because two books is not enough to have going at one time, I started Valley by Stacey McEwen. I am not that far into it. I think I've read about 50 pages so far. <sighs> Stacey's writing. It's such a beautiful experience reading this type of writing. It's sing-song, lyrical. That's the word. It's lyrical, but it's not purpley. As someone who is a big fan of immersion reading, I have experienced the first two books in this trilogy on audio as well, and the narrators were just top notch. Just a beautiful reading and listening experience. So this one picks up right where the second book left off. And for those of you who have read Chasm, you know what the mood is of Dawson and the people of the ledge. And now they have this daunting task of trying to escape the chasm. Are they gonna do it? I don't know. I'll have to keep reading and let y'all find out. Oh my goodness. Stacy has the power to completely break me with the ending of this trilogy. She broke me in the first two books. I'm holding out hope she's gonna give me, if not a happily ever after, at least give me a we're good for right now ending. Just something that's not gonna leave me devastated. Stacy has done a wonderful job of putting her readers into the trenches with these characters. I feel that I have suffered emotionally as much as these characters have. And oh my goodness, what is this ending gonna do? Well, we will find out. Which brings me to what's next on my TBR. What am I gonna pick up after I finish Valley? Y'all, I have one here that I requested the ARC for. As soon as I saw it mentioned, I have next up The Ravening by Daniel Church. Last year, I read The Hollows by this author. It was 
outstanding. You know I love winter themed horror or a horror story that takes place in a winter setting. I will have that review linked for you to watch because it's getting to be that time of year where people are looking for a good horror novel to put on their spooky TBR and it's just getting to be that time of year where it's a cooler setting and I know a lot of people are atmospheric or seasonal readers. They like to read books that are in the season that they're in. Definitely check that one out to see if that's one you might be interested in. But The Ravening, first of all, this is an amazing cover. The Ravening is a gripping and claustrophobic horror novel that sets a timeless evil against one young woman and her belief in herself and the possibility that somewhere, somehow, there is love in the world. <gasps> I am so excited to read this one. Even though it says claustrophobic horror, oh my goodness, y'all, I am very claustrophobic. The kind where if I can't move, I will freak out. In fact, y'all probably noticed I'm very twitchy. I'm constantly moving. It's kind of like my body is checking to make sure that it is able to move should I want to. I do not like being where I cannot move. Like, I am not the person you want to come up on and like bear hug from behind where you're holding my arms down. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. So this one might be a very interesting read for me. We are going to find out. The copy I have is The Ark. This book publishes on September 24th from my friends over at Angry Robot Books. So if you heard all you needed to know to get this one on your TBR, I will have a pre-order link in the description below for you. I fully expect that I will finish the fourth Dungeon Crawler Carl book in the next few days, which means it'll be time to start book five, which is called The Butcher's Masquerade. I am incredibly excited for that one because of the character that is on the cover. I have high hopes that that particular character is going to get a lot of page time in that book because they're on the cover. Fingers crossed. I hope so. For those of you that have read the series, it's got the goat on it. That's all I'll say. Once I finish The Ravening, I'm going to go right into another highly anticipated read called The Puzzle Box. This is the second book in the puzzle series by Danielle Trussoni. I read The Puzzle Master last year and it was a surprise hit. It was a brand new author I had never read before. The publisher reached out to me about reading that one. They said, look, we've looked at your channel. We think this would be a good fit for you. They were right. I had no idea that it was going to have a supernatural occult vibe to it. <sighs> Actually, there's a whole lot more horror elements than just that in it. I thought it was just going to be this mystery intrigue about this guy who had this ability to solve and also create these complex puzzles after being in a football incident when he played in high school. <gasps> it was so much more. My friend Sharon told me that this one was on NetGalley. I requested that one so fast. When that approval came in, I was like, Oh, thank you. So I cannot wait to read that one and tell you all about it. And I don't expect to read any more than that. If that, I've got a lot going on over this next week. I won't be home much to be reading. We spent the holiday weekend at Universal Studios. It was opening weekend for Halloween Horror Nights. We were there opening night until I don't even know how late. We took a break on Saturday. We went back Sunday morning and was there from eight to three doing the six house tour where we went in six of the haunted houses with the lights on. They call it unmasking the horror behind the screams. You get to walk through, take pictures. You get the story of the houses and it was so good. We had an amazing guide. His name was Harry. I loved his vibe, his energy. He told the stories of these houses with his whole body. You could tell he loved his job. So I was like, all right, Harry, how do I make sure I get you next year? And he told me how. So already looking forward and planning ahead for next year. We came home, rested for a couple of hours. We went back to Horror Nights that night with our friend Alicia. I think we went through about four houses with her that night and we'll be going back all weekend this weekend. That's pretty much going to be my life for the next two months until basketball starts. And then it's going to be reading a little Horror Nights a lot and basketball as much as possible. That's all I've got for this weekly update. I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found a book or two that sounded good to you to put on your TBR. Have a great rest of your weekend and remember a good book is always worth sharing. Thanks again to all the patrons of The Nerdy Narrative with a special shout out to my top tier, The Nerds Radiant, 
Chad, Mel, John, Gail, Amanda, Ashley, Star, Tara, Anne, Amanda, Andrew, Kate, and Ev.